We will look at a new logic family. It is still a family that uses a driver and a load. The load this time is not a diode connected and MOS transistor. This will help us with the V threshold drop that we lost on V output high, and it will also help greatly with the transition region and the noise margins in the VTC. So this logic family is called the depletion mode uh, logic family and uh, we will look at the depletion mode inverter and of course uh, gates built upon the depletion load uh, inverter can be built the same way they were built in the enhancement uh, mode family. So the depletion mode inverter is based on using a depletion load and the depletion NMOS uh, is an NMOS in which there is a fabricated channel so there is an implanted channel. There is a channel of n-type of electrons of n-type that is implanted using dopants at fabrication. This means that with VGS equal to zero volt, there is a channel and there is a possibility of conduction through the transistor. On the other hand, if you apply a negative gate potential, this causes electrons to be repulsed away from uh, the oxide and thus causes the channel to disappear and causes the MOSFET to enter into depletion mode. And so the difference between it, this transistor and the normal NMOS happens to be that the threshold voltage for a depletion mode transistor is negative. And so it is very important to notice that this transistor is not a PMOS. This is still an NMOS. It is an NMOS because when VGS increases, current increases. Current flows from drain to source and it flows in, fo in the form of electrons. When VDS increases, current increases. The drain is higher than the source. This is an NMOS in all respects, except for the fact that it has a negative threshold voltage caused by the fact that there is an implanted channel that allows it to conduct with zero VGS. And so this is the ID VGS curve of the depletion mode transistor. Why is this helpful? Because it allows us to use it as a load in a, an inverter. And so this is the inverter. The driver is still a normal uh, NMOS. The load is a depletion NMOS. And V out is still taken at the drain of the driver. And so let's look at how this inverter works. Let's first uh, use V input equals zero volt. Knowing that this is wrong, we should instead be using V input equal V output low, but that it would give us the same uh, results because MD will still be cut off. And so the only equation we have is the I in the load is equal to I in the driver. Uh, the driver in this case is cut off, and therefore I in the load is equal to zero. And so the load, this, di uh, this depletion mode device has no current flowing through it, and yet it is on. Why is it on? Because VGS is zero. But VGS being zero is enough to turn the depletion mode uh, load off, uh, to turn it on, because VGS is greater than V threshold. V threshold is a negative number. So this is on. If it is on and there is no current flowing through it, then is it saturated or ohmic? If we assume that it is saturated, then the saturation current will be K over 2 into VGS, which is 0, minus V threshold, all square. This is a non-zero quantity, meaning that it is impossible for this transistor to be saturated without current flowing through it. So, no, this is not true. This transistor has to be, um, has to be ohmic, and therefore the load is ohmic, and the ohmic equation is KL into VGS, which is 0, minus V threshold D, into VGS, into VDS for this load, which is VDD minus uh, V out, and in this case it's V output high, minus VDS square, which is VDD minus V output high square over two, and this is equal to zero. This equation is solved by VDS equals zero, which causes V output high to be equal to VDD. And this is good, this is what we wanted. We wanted to restore V output high to VDD without having to use two uh, supplies as we had to do with the enhancement load inverter. So V output high is VDD, congratulations. Let's find V output low. 
to find the output low, we use V input equals VDD. In fact, we use V input equals V output high, but fortunately in this case, V output high is going to be VDD. And so we equate the driver current with the load current and try to figure out the regions of operation. The driver is definitely going to be ohmic because if we are producing the output low, if you are producing an output uh, voltage that is a low voltage, then the drain of the driver is going to be small, whereas its gate is at VDD. This means that it is very difficult for this driver to be saturated. It's nearly impossible for it to be saturated. The question is, uh, what is the region of operation of the load? And the region of operation for the load is saturation. To understand why, we have to look at how and when the load saturates. The load saturates when VDS, which is VDD minus V out, is greater than VGS, which is zero, minus V threshold D. So basically, it saturates when V out is less than VDD plus V threshold D. Now, this could suggest that the transistor, the load, is always saturated because uh, if it's saturated when V out is less than a number greater than supply voltage, then it's always saturated. But you have to recall that V threshold depletion is a negative number, and thus this amount is actually slightly less than supply voltage. And so what we are saying is that the load is going to be saturated if the output voltage falls a little bit below supply which is definitely going to happen when the output is the output low. So um, the load is going to be saturated and the driver is going to be ohmic. And we have to write this uh, equation, this current equation with K driver into a VGS, which is VDD minus V threshold into V output low minus V output low square over 2 is equal to KL over 2 VGS, which is 0 minus V threshold depletion square. This is a quadratic equation in the output low. It is slightly easier to handle than the quadratic equation with the enhancement load because we have a constant on this side. In any case, we will solve it and we will find one acceptable value for the output low that satisfies the regions of operation of the two transistors as well as uh, lying between supply and ground. Now, let's try to sketch the VTC, the voltage transfer characteristics of the depletion mode inverter. Uh, and so we will do the same thing we did with the enhancement load inverter, where we try to trace the regions of operation of the load and the driver. And this is actually very helpful in determining the shape of the VTC. So for the driver, we know uh, Two points on the VTC. The first point is that when the input is zero volt, the output is VDD, right? So we know this point and we know that the driver is cut off at this point and that the load is uh, ohmic at this point. This was a solution that we just did. We also know that when the input is VDD, the output is some voltage via output low. So we know that this point lies on the VTC and at this point, the driver is ohmic and the load is saturated. And so now the question is, when does the driver turn on? The driver will turn on at V threshold. And so as long as the driver is cut off, the output will remain at VDD and we have a horizontal section here. When the driver turns on, it will turn on in saturation because it will turn on with a high drain potential because the output is still high. So the drain, the driver turns on in saturation. As with the enhancement load, we can find where the driver switches from saturation to ohmic by writing the inequality V out greater than V in minus V threshold. This is going to be a straight line with an X intercept and V threshold N. And the straight line has a slope of one, right? And so whenever the curve intersects with this straight line, the driver is going to change from saturation to ohmic. On the other hand, the load starts ohmic and ends in saturation. It's never going to be cut off because its VGS is zero, which is enough to turn it on. But at some point, it's going to switch between ohmic and sat. And so for the drive for the load, we know that uh, saturation occurs when VDS, which is VDD minus V out, is greater than 
VGS minus V threshold, which is minus V threshold depletion. So this happens when V out is less than VDD minus the absolute value of V threshold depletion. So we draw a straight line at VDD minus V threshold depletion, and it's a horizontal line. And whenever the, uh, whenever the VTC intersects with this line, the load is going to switch from ohmic to saturation. And whenever the VTC intersects with the line V output equals V input plus V threshold, the driver is going to switch from saturation to ohmic. And so we see that it is still a slightly um, wasteful VTC. It's not near the ideal VTC. It's not giving us the best noise margins we, 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 we can get. But at least it's not doing what the enhancement load VTC did, which is um, basically having two straight line sections intersecting near V threshold and thus forcing us to use the value of V threshold as the value of V input low. In fact, no, there is a value of V input low here, which is higher than V threshold that you can calculate. And so the noise margins are a little bit improved over the enhancement load inverter.